Direct from us to you. It's the AM Show. Okay, so a knock at the door over 35 years ago turned uh, Verna uh, McFeelan's life upside down. The police were there to arrest her husband, and suddenly she was isolated on the outside with her four children. But she wasn't alone, eventually connecting with others going through the same journey, founding this place called Pillars, an organisation that supports the children and families of prisoners who are so often forgotten. She's detailed her experiences in a memoir, The Invisible Sentence, and um, joins us now, Verna. G'day. Good morning. Good morning, Duncan. Welcome to the AM show. The knock on the door resulted in your husband going to prison for how long? Well, he was sentenced to 11 years, but he actually did seven. The interesting thing was that he was sentenced on our 13th wedding anniversary, and I actually went to the board of the parole board at the time uh, saying, you know, he needs to be home with his family, and they released him on our 20th wedding anniversary. <laughs> they, they, they heard you, they sort of heard you a few years later. Yeah. So seven years, what was it like for you? Uh, it was pretty tough. It's really tough, in fact. Um, so you end up actually serving a sentence on the outside of the wire, and that's why I've, I titled my book The Invisible Sentence. How old were the kids when you went to jail? So the oldest one was 12 and the youngest one was six weeks old. Wow, awful. Yeah, yeah. What did you tell them? What did they know? Always the truth. Yeah. The truth, the, as best as I knew it, because I didn't know myself. I didn't even know where the prisons were. Mm. In fact, I asked somebody outside the Addington prison at the time where the prison was, and they didn't even know. So in my day, they weren't even signposted. Did so you take the kids for visits, and that, how did that work? Absolutely. Um, well, Addington prison's not too hot, because it, it had a long barrier down the middle, and um, dads would sit on one side and mums and kids on the other, and you were never allowed to touch. But as things progressed after the sentence you were able to touch but they're still sitting on cold hard seats in a stark environment for about three hours and trying to keep kids amused you know for that amount of time is really hard yeah, and it's you need to do it easy. also quickly you'd be waiting for this day and then it's all bit forced and then all that sort of thing so yeah. what's the hardest thing for for families of prisoners what what do they go through that we don't see from the outside that we don't have any understanding of I suppose the hardest for them is stigma. Most of them are isolated, even from their own families. Um, when someone goes to prison, they, they are tarred with that same brush. Um, it's really hard, especially for the children. They get bullied and teased at school by, by friends. And often it's not the children, it's the parents of those children that are encouraging them not to mix with these children. It's, it's mean, isn't it? I uh, know. And, and peers are really important to kids. They need to have friends. And so in terms of the impacts on your kids, did you see that um, play out? Oh, well, yes, I did. It was terrible. Heartbreaking, um, wasn't it? Oh, it was heartbreaking, all right, yeah, because we'd just come from, a, like, a middle-class family, you know, reasonably well off to into this new way of living, and it was constant moving, um, constant school uniforms for children, um, children not coping at school. Um, my oldest girl, I couldn't even keep at school, and no matter how hard I tried, I'd drop her off at the school and she'd just run out the back door. It was just so hard for them, and it's, it continues to be hard for children. And were you angry, were you angry with your husband for, for oh, this? Oh, my goodness. Oh, yes. I'm <laughs> <up the laughs> very bunk. angry. Hey? <laughs> I was not happy, no, absolutely not. But for me, I had a... Um, I suppose what you call a Damascus Road experience where I actually met God and that sort of changed things and, and gave me a different perspective of life. So, right, so I felt you, there was a purpose. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so with, with that, you set up Pillars. Yeah. And you have been going for, how long has Pillars been around for? Um, oh, goodness me. Well, I left last year 32 years. Right, I've you were been CEO. There. You yeah, were, yeah. Was it yeah. hard to leave? Oh, yes, there was a lot of grieving around leaving. Yeah. But, um, you know, because I, I, I've got a, per, a person of purpose and I need to know what I'm doing in life and what my purpose is. But deep down inside, I can remember a long time ago thinking I need to write a book um, to help other families. So, um, yeah, so I did. It only took me about 30 hours. It just sort of spun out on the page. It was great. And, and what's the relationship like, you know, when your husband finally came out of prison? What was it like for you? Um, how does he reintegrate? What was it like for the kids? What do they think of him? What do they What do they make of Dad being out? Well, it's interesting because my youngest daughter asked at the time, she was six weeks when he went to prison, seven years when he came out, said, where's Dad sleeping? And I said, with me. And she went, oh, yuck. <laughs> I think every child did that. One of the interesting stats, though, and we've talked about this before and you've just uh, uh, increased it in the ad break, a parent in jail makes a child 9.5% or times more likely to end up behind bars as well. That's a really heartbreaking yeah. and staggering stat. That's ha without support. Yeah. So if they're getting the right support, that brings those statistics down. 
How yeah. worried were you for your kids and how did you make sure that they didn't become one of those kids? I was really worried for my children and I did the best as I could as a mum um, to support them as best as I could. But, you know, it was touch and go with a couple of my children at the time. I, mean, I can remember one young, my uh, middle girl, stole bathing togs at school and she thought about it at the time. She'd never stolen anything, but she couldn't be bothered going home to get her togs. And um, she remember thinking, she said to me, I, I remember thinking at the time, if I get caught, I'm just going to go to jail with Dad anyway. So a lot of the children think they're going to end up in prison with their parent as well. So you have to sort of, with that myth, that, yeah. There's no double, myth, double bunking here. What happens, <laughs> double bunking. Um, what happens on average sort of financially? Because I'd imagine, you know, many of the people who end up in prison could be the, the bread earners of in that yes. particular relationship yeah. and mm. bang that's a very very quick scenario change yes. straight on to a benefit of course um i suppose but i can't it, imagine that that that's ever enough no it's not but on top of that you've got to travel to and from prisons to visit and often when um a prison's on remand you've got to support them with their needs as well so there's extra money needed on top of just looking after your family it's not easy. Well, and travelling around, you know, so um, accommodation for families living outside of the prison area. Yeah. So well, well done on what, um, on what you've achieved and what you've done. And certainly um, your organisation has provided so much support over the years for families who, who, who just don't know where to turn to. So, yeah. Yeah, right. appreciate your time this morning. Pillars cool. founder and former CEO, uh, Verna McFelland. Appreciate that. Cool. Brilliant Thank stuff. You. Um, the 8 o'clock news is uh, coming up in about four minutes. Uh, then we cross back to the Garden City for a preview. Uh, what's on offer this weekend? Plus, it's a terrifying time in Israel right now. We'll talk about the tension uh, very shortly. Good morning. Good morning.